everyone. Thanks for joining me today. I am going to be talking today about time. This topic has been on my mind for a while now. And over the last several months, I've written about it and likely mentioned it briefly here on the podcast too. But I wanted to revisit it because I thought it was an interesting topic to explore as the holidays approach and are right around the corner. I mean, wow, I'm just so surprised how fast this year has gone by and can't believe that the end of year is in sight. I know for me, this is going to be relevant to today's topic. I am wanting to slow down time during these next couple of months. So as we enter this time of year and start to look towards the next, I have hopefully not to speed it up quickly, but think of the next year, I thought the idea of rethinking time would be helpful and relevant because I think we can rethink and shape our time more than we realize. That's what I've been kind of pondering and what I've been starting to realize. Plus, I'm realizing I'm recording this actually on the eve of daylight savings time. So tonight we turn the clocks back an hour and I'm a little embarrassed to admit this is like one of my favorite days of the year. Why? Because I get 25 hours tomorrow. I get an extra hour, more time. Yay. (laughs) Um, And that means I can use that extra hour for more sleep or play or exploration, maybe even the mundane things like grocery shopping and finally cleaning up my house. Um, But it's just uh, opportune that this is the day that I'm recording this and kind of a reminder, again, look at that. Time is a construct. Here we are, humans shaping our time and changing our time and, and you know, shifting how we um, work with time throughout the year. So this focus on time all started earlier this year with me picking up one of my favorite books and rereading it called Einstein's Dreams by Alan Lightman. If you haven't read the book, I highly recommend it. It's really a clever and fascinating examination of views on time. Um, Some of those examples might be, and these are probably even the more tame ones, if you will, but um, one is like, what if time went backwards? Or what if we experienced time at different paces, like really fast or really slow? Or what if time existed only in the present? So it's almost like Groundhog's Day. You're having each day over and over and over. Um, so some vignettes are a little bit more plausible, like some of the ones I just mentioned, and some are implausible, like some of the ones I just mentioned. But If you really think about what Einstein said, he's quoted to have said, time is an illusion. So if time is an illusion, what does it mean? What can we kind of reshape our time? So think about it, like something like changing the pace of our time. We we can actually do that. Um, For example, this is an event I should speed up. So maybe this is a silly example, but I'm I'm a huge West Wing fan. I've watched it a ton. And I love an episode where CJ Craig, when she's chief of staff, has a meeting with someone and it ends up being like a two minute meeting. And at the end, the gentleman says, you know, he actually requests a meeting with the president and she ends up replying, this was your meeting with the president. And that last little bit maybe isn't important, but it was at that moment where it struck me that, wow, people can have really short meetings. It was like only, like I said, a couple minutes long. And so you can accomplish a lot in a short period of time. You can actually potentially speed things up. Or what if time only exists in the present, as I mentioned? I mean, in reality, it actually only does. And that's why there's so much guidance to live in the present. Or think about if this is an event I should slow down, that can happen too. So Jenny Blake talked about this in one of her episodes on her free time podcast. It was episode number three with guest Christine Arilo. I know I'm getting her last name wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, But she, they talk about a time in New York city where they were trying to get, I think to a yoga class and Jenny was really stressed about getting there in time, but Christine guided them to feel like there was enough time. And sure enough, they kind of slowed things down. They calmed themselves down and made, they ended up, making it to their class in time. And they did that without feeling frenzied and in some respects, essentially slowing down time. 
So I'll capture that episode in the show notes because it is um, a good episode to listen to and kind of hear other things they happen to talk about. But think about when it comes to slowing something down, um, there's also Gay Hendricks talks about this in his book, The Big Leap, where he talks about changing our mindset around our experience of time. And so he actually, perhaps not surprisingly, calls it Einstein time in the book. And he gives the example of how an hour with a beloved feels like a minute. You know, as much as we want that to be long, it can often feel actually short, while a minute on a hot stove actually can feel like an hour. (laughs) And so he talks about an unlock really being around time to take full ownership of time. And we and really realize that we are actually the source of our time. So he says, quote, quit thinking time is out there. Take ownership of time. Acknowledge that you are where it comes from and it will stop owning you. Claim time is yours and it will release its claim on you. I think that's really powerful and really important. It takes a little bit to get your head around it. I'll admit, I'm still kind of thinking about that and playing with that. And that's part of why I'm going to talk about it today. So because all of this, just time, this concept of time has been showing up a lot for me. And it got me thinking that perhaps we can rethink and shape our time more than we think. And so, again, if you really think about it, the modern view of time, it really is a construct. Our modern world, we humans create constructs to help us function in the world. And so time is no different. It's one of those constructs. And so it's interesting because time and how we think about time can often shackle us to unproductive ways of being and living our lives. So, for example, do we have to work nine to five, five days a week? I mean, that was based on an industrial period of time um, where we had to go to a factory or a location. And granted, a lot of people still have to do this, but certain parts of the workforce operate in different ways. So do we need the same construct and does everyone have to follow that construct or you know, does it have to really be the norm in the U.S. to that we work 40 to 50 to 60 hours a week um, or that we work 50 plus weeks a year, especially here in the United States? So these constructs of time, especially in our modern world today, it, it often does leave us feeling like time controls us more than we control our time. And so, you know, this was what happens oftentimes for some of us that are in professional settings, our calendars fill up with meetings, these time demands continue to roll in both professionally and personally, you know, the seconds and minutes quickly click by on the clock and we can often feel like we're not in choice really around our time. And so what ends up happening is busyness really can consume us. And I think often we don't pause to really think about shaping our time in the way that we want. And I, again, I've been feeling this as late and actually it's something that I've been spending quite a bit of time on is really trying to figure out how do I shape my time better? How do I structure my time better so that uh, it's all more sustainable for myself? So this is something that is really present for me and that I'm working through um, as well. So again, I'm going to talk about what if we could control time more than we think, and what if we can shape our time to our benefit? And so for that reason, I want to throw out a few concepts and ideas for you to consider over the next few weeks and perhaps beyond. Perhaps you take these into your next year, and perhaps these start to become part of a habit that you form or becomes some of the questions that you might ask yourself on a regular basis as you're planning your time. So the first one and the first place I want us to look is around where we are even focusing our time and are we clear on that? So one of my favorite quotes is from Henry David Thoreau. He said, it is not enough to be busy. The question is, what are we busy about? And then if you think about this concept of busy as well, to build on that, in a podcast interview with Seth Godin, Debbie Millman said on, on it was on her podcast, um, she said, busy is a decision. And then if you think about it, building on what Gay Hendricks was saying too, there's also the adage, you don't find time, you make time. So what I like about that too, if you pause to think about it, 
finding time sounds really passive and sounds like it's this difficult exploration. Where the heck is time? It's somewhere out there. Where is it? Where do I find it? Um, and again, that's kind of what Gay Hendricks was talking about. But making time is an act of choice and prioritization. So to shape our time, perhaps we need to first ask where we want to focus it. So what do I want to be busy about? Or to get control of our busy, am I clear on what I want to say yes to and no to in order to set boundaries on my time and what I'm going to take on? And then if busy is a decision, as Debbie Mumman said, and you don't want to be busy, then what would it take to experience something different? What would you want instead? And how do you shape that? And then a final question to ask and be clear on is what, what do I want to make time for? So again, this is all around, are we even clear on where we want to be focusing our time and what we want to put our attention towards? So to bring this to life a little bit, these might be a little bit broad or general concepts, but I'll just say, give you a couple of examples of maybe how this might show up for me. So like, what do I want to be busy about? I want to be busy about showing up and delivering for my clients and helping them succeed. I want to be busy about my work with sustainable ambition and also paying attention to what is needed in my personal relationships and for my family. That's what I want to hold my attention right now. And then I'm going to say yes to growth and learning opportunities. And then maybe this is a tactical one, but I'm just coming to this, that I'm going to say no to personal calls during my workday going forward. Like that's a new no that I'm actually instituting because it was as me being so flexible with my time and trying to accommodate people. It's not that I don't want to connect with people, but it was throwing off my days and making it more challenging for me to make, keep things sustainable, frankly. Um, and then where do I want to, what do I want to make time for? I want to make time for seeing my friends and also for creative activity. So you might end up with all of the answers to those questions being the same. I'm just kind of giving you some examples of how those might show up or how they might start to take shape. So with that, the second thing I'd suggest thinking about is making the most of your time. So I got introduced to Ryan Holiday recently, again, listening to a podcast episode with him. He writes on the Stoics. He's written a couple of books. He has a blog. I believe he has a podcast as well. And one of his, one of the Stoics he references often around time is Seneca. Um, I'm going to admit I'm not an expert on the Stoics, but I have enjoyed starting to learn about Stoics in that time. And I really love a lot of these quotes that Seneca had to say about time. And I think they can really serve as good inspiration for us. So one of those is, it's not that life is short, it's that we waste a lot of it. Hmm, interesting, right? The next one is, I really like this one. You will find no one willing to share out his money. But to how many does each of us divide up his life? People are frugal in guiding, guarding their personal property. But as soon as it comes to squandering time, they are most wasteful of the one thing in which it is right to be stingy. So with those couple quotes, it makes me question, what if we were to treat time as precious? How does that make us think about our time? And would it make us use our time differently? So Holiday also shares how Seneca talks about this idea that it might sound a little morbid, but, but I still think it's an interesting construct. He talks about the idea that death is not in the future. Rather, we are actually dying every day as each day passes. I mean, it is our past. So in some respects, we are dying in quotes. So it's an interesting reframe of how we think about our time. And it made me think, well, what if we were to not let important things go? And what if we realized that we could get more out of brief amounts of time as well? So Seneca says, life is long if you know how to use it. And so I think it goes back to what Gay Hendricks was talking about as well, with like time with a loved one feels short, time on a hot stove is long. 
It also makes me think about just this exercise, right? Is time, time long or short, you know, is one minute long or short. If you were to sit for one minute and take deep breaths, would that one minute actually feel short or would it actually feel long? I mean, imagine like so many of us, probably most humans these days can actually not sit quiet for one minute. We reach for our phones, we get fidgety. So really like one minute could actually feel quite long. So it's an interesting thing to sit with and to think about if you apply that, even when you think about doing something that's sustaining or something that's going to build your resilience, or if you need to create a pause or create some space, like how much time do you need for that? And can you use these micro moments or small periods of time to kind of help center and restore yourself? So there's a way to think about, I think these quotes, again, all make me think about how do you make the most of your time when we start to think like, what if time is precious or what if we don't let important things go or how can we get more out of brief amounts of time? So for me, just to share a little bit about this, like when I think about time is precious, you know, I sadly lost my uncle recently and it made me so glad though that I had prioritized seeing him more often over the last few years. I had spent time with him and had had some great conversations talking about his life. And I was so grateful that I had invested that time and, and prioritized that. And that makes me think about time being precious. And then this idea of like, don't let important things go. You know, as my parents age, one of the things that I've been doing for myself is kind of clearing the air, if you will. I mean, not like arguments, but more so just not, I mean, I forgave my parents for whatever <laughs> years ago, but I think more about what I focus on here now is more about acknowledging them more, recognizing that they are getting older, that they might leave this earth sometime soon. And how almost can I give them peace? So how can, you know, don't let those important things go where you can be generous towards somebody else or make their time here, uh, better or just in this case, really wanting to acknowledge them and have them feel seen and heard. And then if you think about short periods of time, again, that's one of the things I probably already said it, but I'm really thinking about just how do I use micro moments to really sustain myself? You know, if I don't have a lot of time for a break, sometimes I literally might just take a walk around the block for two minutes to just change the scenery, get some fresh air and create at least a moment of pause for myself. So those are some examples of how you might take this concept of treating or really making the most of your time, uh, taking some of these kind of ideas. And then the third area and final area I'll co cover builds on what I started to share earlier. And, and it's a, this idea of, can, can we change the experience of time? So for example, what if you thought about the quality of the time spent during activity rather than the quantity? So for example, for parents out there, if you only have an hour with your kids in the evening, for example, well, how do you really focus on the quality of that time as opposed to fo focusing on the fact that you have one hour to give? Or is this a time to pause and get quiet, that experience of, of time? Or is this a time to get excited and loud, perhaps. <laughs> or we talked about it earlier, like what if you could control your pace? Is this an event I should speed up or is this an event I should slow down? Or if I wanna have the next few months feel a particular way. So as you think about this coming, the remainder of November, December, what do you want these next few months to really feel like? And what does that mean in terms of how you'd like to spend your time doing certain activities if you want it to feel a particular way? So again, like that quality of time might start to look like what, you know, paying attention in this moment, taking it in, being present, um, creating a 
you know, if you, if you want to change an experience time and it's something where it's like being quiet, I know I do this sometimes, even just when I'm working where I'm like, whoa, I'm working on something where I can't have noise. I really need to focus. I need quiet. So sometimes even in that regard, it's kind of me noticing I need to get some quiet, um, so that I can focus or hear myself. Um, there's other times when I know I need to kind of pick up the energy and get that excitement going. So that's something to pay attention to. I also think coming back to this idea of pace, it's related to kind of excitement or, or maybe not, but like, um, the idea that comes to mind here is actually we traveled, my husband, and I traveled recently and, probably because he's now familiar with traveling me with, with me so much uh, at this point of our relationship that we like to get to the airport a little bit earlier. He used to like to get there last minute. Now and traveling with me, he's learned um, that it works a lot better for both of us. <laughs> if we just get there early, if we're not rushing, if we're slowing it down, and it actually makes that part of the travel experience just better by slowing down the pace and not making it so harried. So again, controlling that pace can really change the experience of your time. And then just to give you an example as well around like what I, for, for me, for example, a couple of examples of how I want the next few months to feel like I'm really wanting to feel inspired and energized with things opening up, I am excited to get back out. I love cities. I live in a city. I live in San Francisco. I love walking in cities. And so to get me inspired and energized, I'm going to plan to do some city walks and have do that with a friend and really go explore some neighborhoods in San Francisco that I haven't been in much of late, which is many, especially given the pandemic, since I've stayed pretty close to my hood for the last year and a half plus. Um, then I also want to feel, you know, experience a sense of renewal this co next coming months. Actually, I'm not going to wait till January. So <laughs> I'm definitely for that. I'm planning some downtime for myself and also some creative activities for myself because doing those activities is something that actually really renews me. So those are some examples of like, what does it mean to kind of rethink and shape our time. And again, remember, time is a construct. It's an illusion that we often falsely understand. And think about like, how might you create your own perspective on time and start to bend and shape it to support your own sustainable ambition? And I think it is just a fun inquiry as you enter into these last couple of months of the year, as you start to think about the start of the new year, that it, it just might be a cool thing to bring into this next new normal as we're starting to get into going back out into the world and starting to shape some new more norms, just might be something helpful to kind of take on. And as you think about going into the, the, the new year. And really think about like, how do you want to shape it to make it more sustainable for you? So again, just to kind of summarize, think about like, where do you want to focus your time? How can you make the most of your time? And then how do you want to shape the experience of your time? So again, I offer you to play with this so you can shift time from something that really oftentimes has such a negative association and this sense of grasping for time towards one that perhaps is a little bit more positive and one that's a little bit more playful and powerful and puts you back in control. Because really your time is yours and how do you want to rethink it and really shape it? So I'll leave you there. I hope that's helpful. Um, thanks so much for being with me, everyone. I hope you do have fun with this inquiry and practice with it and that it makes the holiday period more joyful for you. And reach out and let me know how it goes. If you do play with this and you have some learnings, I'd love to hear from you. And you can send me an email at podcast at sustainableambition.com. Or if you want, send me an email. If you have a listener question you'd like me to address or want to send on some feedback. And if you're enjoying the podcast, I would be so grateful for you to rate and review it and share it with others. It really does help to get the podcast known out there. And I'd really love for it to be helpful for as many people as possible. 
And I just want to say for those of you who have left reviews, there's someone G-I-N-Y-C, there's Eva Janata. I mean, your ratings are so uh, thoughtful and your comments, I really just so appreciate it that you've left me that feedback. It really uh, makes my day. I'm so very grateful. Um, I loved reading them and I'm just so thrilled that this is serving a purpose for you and is helpful. So thank you for that feedback and for leaving those reviews. So with that, thanks again, everyone for listening. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving for those in the U.S. This should come out before then. That's my intent. And really enjoy the holidays. Okay. And until next time, I guess that's intentional. Until next time, be well. Find more inspiring interviews and get show notes for this episode at sustainableambition.com slash podcast. Make sure you don't miss an episode or my insider tips, guides, and tools by signing up for Sustainable Ambition Forum, my twice monthly newsletter. Sign up at sustainableambition.com slash subscribe. Thanks again for joining me. Speak with you next time.